Hey everyone, Apple has released its new and upgraded operating system. So what's new here? I'm Angie for GSM Marina, and these are the key features of iOS 14. <music> iOS 14 has been released and is available for download if you have an iPhone 6S or any iPhone release since then. This is starkly different from Android 11, which is currently only available for Pixel devices and is yet to be rolled out to other Android phones. Yeah, Apple having such tight control over their hardware and software allows them to offer an incredible level of software support to their users. So what's new here? One of the biggest changes of iOS 14 has to do with widgets. For the first time, you can add widgets to your home screen and have useful information available at a glance. The widgets can be set in one of three different sizes. There's also a neat way to automate your widgets called a smart stack. You can put multiple widgets in a stack and depending on the time, location, or activity, a different one will be displayed to you. There's also a new option for organizing your apps called the app library. It's Apple's version of an app drawer and it's always the rightmost home screen pane. The library will sort the apps into categories for you. Another new feature is the option to change the default web browser or mail app. Unfortunately, it only works for these two apps, while we would have loved to change our default Maps app. Communication with your iPhone has also seen some welcome upgrades. For starters, incoming calls won't take up the whole display anymore. You'll see an incoming call bar up at the top of the phone, which you'll use to accept or reject the call. Video chats through several apps, including FaceTime, now support a floating picture in picture mode, so you can minimize your video feed and do other things in the background. This works for most video apps, save for YouTube, where it requires a premium subscription. For your text conversations, you now get pins that you can use to mark your most important threads and keep them at the top of your list for easy access. And in group chats, you can reply directly to someone's message, a feature called inline replies. After this, you can view that specific interaction as its own thread if you want to. You can also type someone's name from the chat to directly message them. And communicating in a foreign language is now easier thanks to the new Translate app, which has support for 11 different languages at launch. Like Google's Translate, you can use it for both text and audio, which it can translate in real time. Apple's assistant Siri brings a brand new streamlined look. Now she won't take up the whole display, but just appear down at the bottom when activated. And with iOS 14, there's a new gesture shortcut available, tapping on the back of the phone. You can program it to activate a specific app or function. Apple's App Store has a big new feature called App Clips. This allows you to use a clip or a small functional part of an app on the fly without having to actually download that application. This could be used for something like a bike rental, some sort of payment, or ordering food. The clips can be activated through a real-world interaction via NFC or QR code, or accessed through the internet. There are plenty of updates in specific apps as well. For example, Maps. Now, navigation can give you optimized routes for biking using elevation data. There is also information about speed cameras and red light cameras. The Health app now includes sleep monitoring to make sure that you get enough rest. It also gives you reminders about headphone volume to help you preserve your hearing. Apple claims better camera performance with the new update with faster processing times for your shots, and there's a new exposure compensation control. AirPods have some new features, including spatial audio and automatic switching between devices. And there are a bunch of new updates that have to do with privacy. One of the most obvious ones is the indicator which appears at the top of the screen to alert you when an app is using the microphone or camera. Plus, there's a privacy report button in the App Store that lets you see an app's privacy practices before you install it. If an app needs your location information, now it doesn't have to be exact. You can use an approximate location to enable functions like local news and weather. The web browser can now also show you a privacy report instantaneously to see who's tracking your browsing behavior. So there you have it, everyone. iOS 14 does plenty to improve the iPhone experience, from messaging to video calling to your home screen. The new privacy options are nice, and there are so many improvements in apps across the board that there are almost too many to count. The best part of it all is that you can download iOS 14 right now as long as you have a modern iPhone, and you don't have to wait, unlike for Android 11. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.